Hello and welcome to this demo. In this demo, we're going to look at some tips and tricks on working with YAML files. Um, some of my students in the past have had issues uh, getting the YAML files right, and um, sometimes it's hard to put together the YAML files for Kubernetes. So in this uh, demo, we're going to look at some plugins that are available with uh, PyCharm um, that will help us easily develop Kubernetes definition files. Um, and we'll also look uh, at how we can validate and ensure that the format of the YAML files that we develop is actually uh, good. So let's get started. So JetBrains has a plugin for Kubernetes and OpenShift uh, resource support. And if you go to plugins.jetbrains.com and search for Kubernetes, you'll actually uh, find this. This is actually compatible with multiple uh, JetBrains products like IntelliJ IDEA, WebStorm, PyCharm, etc. PyCharm is what we're using right now. And you can actually see the instructions uh, that are available here on installing it and uh, you can see the different features that are available. So it has uh, features for auto completion of properties, resources, pop-up documentation of properties, etc. And this, this is actually going to uh, help us uh, very much. Um, so to get it uh, configured, you, you can actually download the latest version of the plugin that is available. So I'm, I've already downloaded it. It's in a zip uh, format. And if you go into your PyCharm and if you go into File and uh, Settings, um, you can actually uh, install it from the Plugins section of your settings. So uh, select uh, or click on the uh, Plugins section in, in Settings. And there's an option called Install Plugin from Disk. So uh, I'm going to click on that and select the file that you downloaded. You can check the plugin there to enable it. So check it, click on OK, and it will ask you uh, if you are ready to restart it. Uh, so you remember that you'll have to restart the IDE once uh, you enable the plugin. So wait for it to come back up. And once it's back up, you can confirm that it's working uh, by looking at any of, the, any of your existing uh, Kubernetes definition files. If it's working and if it's enabled properly, you will see that the icon of the file actually changes to the Kubernetes icon, uh, which is the blue icon that you see there. So right now, um, I'm going to uh, create the pod definition file again from scratch, just to show you how easy it is uh, using this Kubernetes plugin to develop the configuration file. So I'm going to create a new empty file called pod definition 2yaml and as you can see, uh, when it's blank, it doesn't actually identify it as a Kubernetes file because there's nothing in it. I'm now going to uh, add uh, the API version, uh, the various root level properties of the document. So just to start with the API version. Now, when I type in API version, and after I have the colon in, and when I and after the space. If I need to invoke the drop-down feature of uh, Kubernetes plugin that I just installed, I could press the control and space combination key. And when I do that, it actually lists all the supported uh, versions uh, that are available. And the top one is V1, which is what we want. So I'm going to hit V1 and hit enter. So it selects that uh, that value from the drop down. And in the next line, uh, I'm going to specify kind. And then again, I'm going to hit the control space combination and it lists me all the values that are available for V1. So right there, it actually does a filter of all the types of uh, objects that I can create in Kubernetes um, filtered by the version that I specified in the previous line. So that's pretty cool. So even if you were trying to create, uh, say, something else like a deployment and you didn't actually get your API version right, this will actually ensure that you get it right because it doesn't even list deployment here. 
So in our case, since we need to create a pod, it's actually listed here as it's part of V1. So we're good with that. So I'm going to select pod. Okay, and the next section is metadata. So as soon as I type meta, it, it auto automatically fills the remaining portion of it. It knows that it's an object, so it takes me to the uh, to the next line and automatically intends uh, it to a bit toward to the right. I can now add name, and um, as soon as I start typing something, it automatically populates uh, the supported values. So I'm going to add label, and when I select label, it knows that it's a, a dictionary, so it automatically takes me to the next line and to the next level. And when I try to list suggestions at this level uh, by pressing the control space combination, it says no suggestions. Now what that means is that, uh, uh, as we discussed earlier, under labels, I could actually have any key value pair as I want because it's a, it's a set of labels and I could have any labels I want. So that's why it says no suggestion. So whenever it says no suggestions, that just means you can simply create any key value pairs over there. Okay, um, and then uh, now I'm gonna have add spec. Now under the spec section, if I'm not sure what falls under it for pod, I could do a control space and it lists me the various options available for a pod under the spec section and at the top you can see um, it has containers which is what uh, we usually use for a pod and if you look at it it has two brackets and that indicates that it is a list item so uh, when you select containers it uh, takes you to the next line and to the right indicating that it's an object in this case it happens to be a list I'm now going to create the first element, first item in the container. So I need to uh, add a dash uh, followed by a space. And then if I'm not sure what what uh, was under it, um, I could do a control space and it lists me and tells me that it's name. So I'm going to put the name again. I'm going to do a control space and you can see that it has image and image pull policy, a number of other options available under it. And I can pick the one that I want. Okay, so that is great. And um, as you can see, it's really, really easy for us to uh, create and validate that our Kubernetes definition file is, is valid uh, using the Kubernetes plugin in JetBrains. As and when we go forward, we'll see more use cases of this plugin, but that is it for now. I also want to show you another trick to uh, validate that your uh, YAML file is in a good state. Um, in my previous courses, students have had issues uh, in the structure of the YAML files. Sometimes you have additional spaces in places where it's not required or uh, your certain lines are not intended correctly, etc. If you want to validate that before you actually use your YAML file, you could use uh, YAML linters. Um, so and this is a sample uh, YAML lint website. So it's at yamllint.com. And it's very simple. You have a text box where you could put in your uh, uh, pod definition.yaml file or any YAML file that you create and click on go and it'll tell you if it's a good or a bad file. In this case, it's a good file. I'm just going to simulate an error by putting an extra space in an unwanted position. And when I click on go, it actually tells you where the error is, where it tells you where, where the error is on and on which line it is. So this is actually really helpful uh, for beginners in working with YAML. It helps you validate your YAML file before you actually use it. And uh, in the coding exercises that follow this course, I would highly recommend checking your YAML files uh, in a linter uh, like the one that we just saw. That's it for this lecture. Thank you very much, and I will see you in the next demo.